the Sharia probably will be different. What is allowed in Adam's time do not allow in the time of Noah. What was allowed in the time of Noah was not allowed in the time of Abraham. What is allowed in the time of Moses may not be allowed in the time of Jesus. What is allowed at that time now when Allah perfected this deen, then nothing can change what is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this final revelation. This is final and Allah makes it the best. I give you one simple example to end my speech this night. In my country, in Malaysia, you have a lot of Chinese like me. Very successful in business. In every city, you, look, you find the Chinese around because they are very hard-working people. A lot of Chinese are free thinkers. They can believe in anything. They believe God, money, God, God. No money, no God. So, their first God is money. Why? Because each time when they want to worship their God, they must buy something. They must give their God to eat, and then they can make dua. You never see a Chinese go to the temple without bringing anything. They must bring something. Flour, food, egg, anything. They must bring and put in front what they believe their God. And after five minutes, ten minutes, they will take two coins and they throw. If one is head and one is flower, then they know that now God has finished his lunch. After God has finished his lunch, then we can ask God for something. So it's business. Even with God, it's business. You want to ask something from God, you give him something first. That is the Chinese way of thinking. You know when I talk to them, I talk to all Chinese people about this thing, about the do and don't. I found that the Chinese, there is no problem for them to become a Muslim. Very easy. Because it's now make things simple for them. Make it very simple. You want to pray, you don't have to use any money. It's free. The water also is free. You don't go to have to go to the temple. You don't have to take care of this either. You don't have to buy anything. But even the Chinese, they believe. They say to me, do you know? I know Islam is very good. But when I have a lot of Muslim friends. I have a lot of Muslim friends. Each time when they promise with me, they break their promise. And each time when they borrow money from me, they disappear. See, this is the friend here. Because when I visit one of my Chinese friends, he's a businessman, I was surprised to see he got many Islamic books in his room. I said, are you a Muslim? He said, no, but you have a lot of books. All the fiqh book you are reading? Yes. You know what I am doing? I was w checking all this book in Islam. Is there a teaching in Islam say that if a Muslim borrow money from a non-Muslim, you don't have to pay back? Because I, I have another book. Other than all the Islamic book, I have another book I will show you. This book this name, Abdurrahman, Abdurrahim, Mustafa, Ahmad, Qasim, all beautiful names. Omar, Ali, they take 100, they pay me 30 ringgit, 70 dollars, they disappeared. This one, he borrowed 300, he gave me back 50 ringgit, 250 balance, he disappeared. That's why he feel very bad. No, Islam is beautiful, but the Muslim are ugly. We are the cause of the great fitna, fellow brother and sister. We must help them. We must help a lot of people who are not able to come to Islam because they don't understand, because they have bad experience with Muslim. 
Now I want to call all of you today. Please follow the teaching of the beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. You will never regret. You will never regret. I will teach you a few things for you to practice. So that wherever you go, you can do some da'wah to some people. You know that the Prophet ﷺ say, إِذَا لَقِيْتَهُ حَقْلُ مُسْلِمْ عَلَى مُسْلِمْ سِتْتُنْ The responsibility of the Muslim to a Muslim is six. One of it is, لَقِيْتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ When you meet fellow Muslim, what do you say? Islamic greeting, true or not? Assalamu alaikum. Even there's one Muslim, there are four not yet Muslim, give salam to that Muslim. I always give salam to my Muslim brother wherever I go. And also in, in front of my family, when there are some Muslims, I give salam. Each time my family see me, they also give salam to me now. Each time when they, call, they know that I'm calling through the phone, they give, Assalamu alaikum. Now, what are you going to say, brother? If a not yet Muslim, your friend, came and gave, Assalamu alaikum. What are you going to say? Yeah, good. You know, when I first become Muslim, when my family still gives salam, I don't know what to say. Because my people, my teacher at that time, said, no. If a non-Muslim gives salam, don't answer. If you answer, wa alaikum sam. So I also don't know what is wa alaikum sam. I also don't know. I'm ignorant. I'm just starting to learn about Islam. So whenever my sister gives salam to me, I say, Wa alaikum salam. She, she is so very happy. She is okay. Because she also don't know what I'm saying to her. And I also don't know what I'm saying to her too. But later on, when I learned about Islam when I was in Medina, I learned that the Prophet said, Whoever gives you a salam, answer his salam. It's a Jew or Nasara, answer him. Then the companion asked the Prophet how to give salam. Say, Wa alayka or wa alaykum. In Sahih Abu Dawud, in Tafsir, in the Kathir, you can get it, or Fatul Qadir, you can get you know, the explanation in detail about this. You are not supposed to tongue tie when you see. A Muslim gives salam, Salaam alaikum, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. When you see a Hindu gives salam, Salaam alaikum. Why do you do that? Say something. Say something to him. He has good feeling to you now. He knows that the Muslim greeting is a beautiful greeting. He wants to be part of you. Welcome him. Come. There's nothing wrong. Get him closer. It's good. He has started to give you salam. But you don't even give him a chance to say salam. Then you have some Muslim in my country. You know, brother, next time you see me, don't give me salam, okay? Because you are not Muslim. I'm Muslim. You don't give salam. You know, you are lucky I don't give you the answer. You know, if I answer you this salam, you are in trouble. Huh? He got shocked. What? If you answer, I'm in trouble? Yes. You know what I will say to you? May Allah curse you. Whoa. I think salam is peace. And you are responding, may God curse me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next time, no more salam. Why you do that? He is coming closer to Islam. He want to give you salam. He is accepting your value. You should encourage him and tell him what is salam. Slowly we hope that he loves this word. Salam. Peace, peace. We always talk about peace. We hope that he will love Islam if you practice the teaching of the Prophet. Because the beauty of Islam is in the Sunnah. Without practicing the Sunnah, you cannot appreciate Islam at all. Only the Sunnah will teach you in detail how to be a good Muslim. How to act like a Muslim, talk like a Muslim, behave like a Muslim, dress like a Muslim. Only in the Sunnah you got all the beautiful teaching. May Allah help us to help other people. May Allah make us a practicing Muslim to help others to come closer to Islam. Wa